What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to Hoonigan Autofocus. We're at Super Lap Battle at Circuit of the Americas here in Texas. And I kind of wanted to do like a build biology update. Um, and of course I got uh, the blessing from Nads, Mr. Honda himself, um, because um, Nads was the guy that originally um, brought the car over to the uh, Hoonigan Donut Garage, right? Yeah, it was like a combination of Nads and Vin. Okay, all right, so uh, Amir here is the builder of this beautiful Acura NSX. Uh, how, how is it to drive Circuit of the Americas in this anyways? Oh, dude, it's incredible. It's uh, it, It's been a dream. I came at the inaugural F1 race when they first opened this track, and the second I saw it, I knew I had to drive it, and being out here with Super Lap Battle has been incredible. Is this your first time driving? It's not, it's my first time driving this car here. Last year, this car was supposed to be here. We ran into a couple of issues and I came in my good friend's GT3. He was kind enough to lend it to me and I drove that. Of course, I mean, everybody has to have a good friend with a GT3. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm very, I'm very fortunate. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about updates since okay. Build Biology. Um, yeah, definitely. When you took it to the Hoonigan uh, Donut Garage um, for, for just like a, a really very fine overview of all of the things you've done to it. Um, since then, you've actually added quite a bit to it, huh? Yes, sir. So we've changed the setup uh, quite a bit and we're gonna continue to change it as the year goes. Uh, I would say probably the most obvious changes are we changed the wheel setup. So before we had two E37s in the 1718 double stagger, we switched to an 1818 setup with a 265 in the front and a 295 in the rear, substantially more grip. Uh, and I, I think I like the look a little bit more than the double stagger and the TE as well. And then from there, we also had Riley stare at RS Motorsport, who I know has been on, you know, Hoonigan quite a few times. Uh, he, he also put a six point street class legal cage in here, full with FIA bars, door bars, all of the fun stuff in there to ensure that this car is a little bit safer uh, than it was because it, we, uh, when we did the build biology, it was right before GTA finals. And uh, the car was a little bit scary in terms of safety. We went out and we set a time that we really weren't expecting and the car was a lot faster than, uh, than we expected. And because of that, we're like, okay, now the car is fast enough that we really need to make it safe. And Riley took care of that. The thing about Riley, I say, is that he's the next generation when it comes to really the forefront of this kind of tuning and of just car culture in general, like our generation, right? Yeah. Um, but you have a hand in it too, in terms of building aero or building uh, carbon bits and just actually a lot of your parts are on a lot of the cars here at uh, uh, Super Lot Battle, correct? Yeah, I'm fortunate in the sense that a lot of Time Attack cars do run the RS Future Aero and a lot of the parts and the development. At Super Lot Battle, we have a few cars here, not quite as much as we had at Finals. At Finals, like a third of the cars had our parts on them, but here we still have quite a few and it's, it's pretty cool to see. And we're doing our best to kind of keep Time Attack moving and try to help uh, the sport grow. Yeah, uh, I mean, for, for uh, how many, I was really, really surprised. Uh, during lunchtime, they let just the fans walk up and down pit lane, right? And all the uh, drivers bring their cars out, all of the owners. I couldn't believe how many people were in one place. Uh, again, I mean, it's been such a crazy year last year. You know, we say that all the time, but uh, for so many people to gather just to watch Time Attack, actually was really refreshing. It was really cool to see. It, it, it really was. And it was so nice to have fans and people and meet new people. And it was really cool. Uh, we had a, an unfortunate issue in session one where the car had to go on the tow truck. And I was sitting with the tow truck driver. And the first thing he said was, he was like, it was so nice to have people here. He was like, he missed it so much. And I have to admit that it was very nice to be out here with people and fans and fans of Time Attack. And it was so cool to see as many people as we had in the grid and in the stands and at the shows and everything. So let's do a walk around. Let's finish up this uh, um, build bio update. <laughs> what else have you done to this? 
So we made a few minor aero adjustments that unfortunately you can't see. A lot of the stuff that's been updated on the car, the only real visual aspects you will see are the wheels and the cage and then the modifications to the interior to fit the cage. So those are gonna be the big changes that you see. We obviously had to cut up the interior uh, pretty substantially to make the car compliant with street class rules. The, a lot of the components are still the same. We have, as I mentioned, quite a few upgrades going into it. The KW Club Sport coilovers are gonna be switched for KW competition dampers. The turbo that's on the car now is gonna get removed for a Garrett G3770. We're gonna add a couple of hundred horsepower to the car. The engine was very hurt this event and pushing a ton of coolant, unfortunately. So that's coming out and we are going to rebuild it with a K24, a fresh K24, make even more power and a little bit more reliability and uh, move on from the event and kind of evolve the car as we hope to for the rest of the year. Uh, in terms of like updates that have happened since the build biology, most of them you can't see, the cage and the wheels are the ones that you can. One comment that I have to make is, <laughs> this is like a seat because you have to have a seat, right? <laughs> it, it is. So uh, because this is a street class car, I actually do drive it on the street and I try to take it out to events and I, I really do enjoy driving it, you know, uh, when I can. And we do have two passenger seat configurations. One of them is a standard bridge seat that uh, matches the driver's seat quite well. This is a compliant seat because in street class, you have to have a driver and a passenger seat. And this is one that you can buy. It's off the shelf. Anyone can buy it. It's a drag racing seat. So we got this so that that way we, it, it fits the rules, but it's as light as possible. And weight's been a huge focus on this car. How much does this weigh? Uh, I believe around five to six pounds. <laughs> For a seat. For a seat, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, it, it's ridiculous. I don't know if you guys touched on the paint, but uh, obviously when you guys do build bios, uh -huh. It's indoors. Yes. Being able to see this across all different light conditions <laughs> out here at Coda was, it was cool. It reminded me, of course, of the R34 Midnight Purple, right? I is it? it? It is R34 GTR Midnight Purple 2. So oh, that would is. be why, yeah. So I've always been a fan of this color, Midnight Purple 2. And one time I went to a car show, car meet, where there was a, a nurse spec R34 GTR with Midnight Purple 2, and I knew that I had to paint a car that color. And when the opportunity came to build this car and do the bodywork exactly how I wanted, there was only one option for paint, and it was this. And uh, the paint was shockingly more expensive than I thought it would gonna be. It was gonna be, and then matching it is incredibly difficult. So like, if you really damage a panel, you essentially have to repaint the whole car. But I would say it's one of the most standout aspects of the car, and I absolutely, I wouldn't change it. Yeah, it just looks different and there's different colors yeah. to it as you walk around it. Um, so tell me a little bit about the power plant choice you're moving forward with. Is it because you've essentially updated the rest of the car to the point where you actually need more power? So when we started the build, I like to do things in steps. And uh, if you make a car incredibly complex from the beginning, it's very hard to know where your uh, good and bad aspects are. Uh, we have the car in a very healthy, reliable, and fast state. And we knew that from there, we're gonna have to start basically upgrading every system. And one of the big, thing, big things was power. Uh, at Global Time Attack Finals, and probably even this weekend, we have one of the lowest horsepowers of the cars on the pointy end. We only make about 424 horsepower at the wheel on low boost. We really never run it on high boost. We were hoping to run it on high boost this weekend, but because the engine was hurt, we just left it there. and. Uh, in our partnership with Garrett, we really want to up the horsepower, but I love the response that the turbo has. So we're going to a bigger K24 with a higher compression to get the horsepower and the response. Uh, what problems did you run into this weekend? So this weekend was a challenging one. Uh, lap one, session one, we blew the fuel pump fuse, which was a freak thing that's never happened before. Replaced the fuse, expecting it to potentially blow again. We thought maybe the fuel pump was failing and it's been completely problem free. From there, uh, we've been pushing a lot of coolant, unfortunately. This engine, we, we went through hell to get the K20 to work in an NSX. It was surprisingly difficult to make it work. And one of the things that we struggled with was the cooling and the cooling system design to get it to not overheat. So this engine has been overheated, God, it has like 20, 30 times as we kind of decided how to best make it work. Uh, we run two water pumps, the mechanical pump in the back and an electric pump in the front a swirl pot and an expansion tank. And that's what we found kind of gets it to work. But the engine finally started to let go and the uh, the car pushed a lot of coolant. We were also having a lot of blow by because the engine was so hurt. In the beginning of session one, day two, we had an issue where 
the tire locked in the chassis and broke the steering rack. So it, it was a very tough weekend, unfortunately. Well, at least you're going to uh, break it down and update it after this. But I had a question about uh, the transmission. So okay. what transmission are you running? So we run a Samsonis six-speed dog box. So that's why it kind of sounds as crazy and clunky and whiny as it does. The, uh, we use the stock K20 uh, bell housing and outer case and a K20 style hybrid racing shifter. But the internals are all custom forged dog box gears. It's really something else. Um, the fact that you can keep up with so many of the competitors with honestly almost 200 less horsepower than most of the competitors, even more so, right? Yeah. Uh, some of them, like at finals, we had something like a 220 horsepower deficit. So that, and that's because of the balance. Aerodynamically, the car is very strong. Weight-wise, the car only weighs uh, 2350 with the cage. So. It weighs 2350 in the build biology, it weighs 2350 now. And that's kind of part of what I was talking about in the updates that you can't see. So adding probably a hundred pounds of tubing, the car weighs the same. And the weight and the aerodynamics make it a huge advantage along with the suspension. We have the suspension really dialed in, but we're at a point where it tracks like this. We just need the horsepower. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, this, I can't believe how big this, this is my first time shooting this track. Um, and it's just so, it takes so long just to get around it, even if you're, if you're uh, using a golf cart. Um, yeah, thank you so much for kind of giving us an update. I, I, I appreciate you caring enough to look at it. Thank you so much. You do awesome work and uh, thank you for uh, being out here and shooting this. It's great to have you out here. Yeah, it, it was a pleasure. This thing is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you and uh, hopefully we'll see you next year. Oh, we will.